Hey gang, today we are taking a look at the Transformers Universal Studios Ride exclusive figure EVAC. Now, EVAC was procured for me by my good friend, Mr. Optibotamus. Uh, he is a California resident and was able to get this sucker for me and ship it out. So, uh, big thanks, uh, Optibotamus. Uh, wouldn't have this guy without you, especially at the oh-so-not-so-reasonable price of 60 plus dollars goddamn scalpers anyway uh so evac is packaged in the red classics uh packaging and transformation uh transformation level is intermediate and level two package is kind of plain i'm not gonna lie there's not much going on here uh, there are some tech specs there on the side which uh we'll take a closer look at here in a second and it's deluxe class figure so it looks a little small on the card. Wanted to give you guys a good look at his tech specs. Uh, I find it interesting since his endurance is 4, yet his speed is 9. So that means he gets really bad gas mileage. Uh, he does appear to be somewhat of a, I would say more of a scout. But with an endurance of 4, I, that... I don't know what he would be, but anyway, I, I find that really interesting, so I just wanted to share that with you. And here we have Evac out of the packaging. Now, I have to admit the detailing on this guy is incredible, especially in the legs and in the chest. It just looks really, really good and is just really nice. The overall sculpt of the figure is good and is very, uh, very Dark of the Moon, I will say, but he is supposed to be a Dark of the Moon figure. The face is kind of bland, but there's supposedly more detail in there, but I just can't see it, uh, simply because it's all silver. Now, he does have yellow eyes. There are yellow eyes in there, and there are there is some light piping on the back, or supposedly light piping on the back, but when I was looking at the figure, I am wrong. Those are painted eyes. Gotta give Hasbro credit. Painted eyes. Very nice. And then the yellow on the back of the head is painted. It is not light piping. Sorry about that, guys. That was my fault. The figure does look very good, as I said. There are a few uh, gaffes, I will admit, though. Uh, chiefly of which the head posability is non-existent. Well, except for the side to side, which is part of the transformation. You do have a little bit of up and down movement, but very, very little. Uh, the other gaffes, I would say, are the wheels are not really all that secure. They vibrate a lot. And then you've got this giant backpack. You can have uh, the wings deployed like that, or you can close up the wings. Uh, either way, he's got a really big backpack. I personally like the wings deployed. He also does not come with any weapons, which is a shame, but he doesn't have the mech tech gimmick that uh, the Dark of the Moon line has. Uh, his arms do look like they've got blasters on them uh, right here, but that's okay. I think I'd repaint these uh, to look more like exhausts or better blasters. Like a uh, posability, as I was saying, uh, the head can move side to side. There is a uh, in and out joint here at the, just behind the shoulder, part of the transformation. Ball joint in the shoulder, hinge joint in the elbows, no hand articulation. Uh, ball joint in the hip. There's a swivel joint here in the thigh, but you're not going to be able to move it because of this piece of uh, uh, this piece of uh, kibble from the vehicle mode. Hinge joint at the knee, and then um, there's a hinge joint in the ankle that turns in. Very, very weird. But you can get some decent poses out of this guy. But because of the weight of the backpack, it's a little bit dicey. I do like the fact that he has what appears to be a, a hyper beam cannon from the Gundam universe square in his abdomen. That is a nice touch. So to give you guys a size comparison, here's Evac with Deluxe R.I.D. Um, Viacon and Deluxe Dark of the Moon Soundwave. Now Soundwave appears to be taller, but he actually isn't. Um, it's just because of Soundwave's backpack. Uh, he, Evac is roughly the size of current deluxe class figures, so that's a good thing. So as we look at the transformation, I do have to say it is pretty darn complex, but it is very, very cool. To start off with, we're actually just going to reach behind the figure, pull the backpack down, and then pull it straight up, uh, basically unpinning this section from the rest of the body like that. 
and then we will lift the entire front of the figure up. And I don't know why, but this makes me think of like some kind of horror zombie, uh, zombie uh, evac figure from the recent um, in infec infection. Yeah, the infection comics uh, from IDW. Rawr, sparks. Anyway, so uh, we'll start off with this. Take the head and rotate it 180 degrees and then fold it completely into the back. Take the arms and fold them directly underneath where the head was so that they are pointing down, straight down, like that. And you want them to actually be touching at the hands. Now one thing I did notice when I first transformed this, I actually screwed it up the first time. What you want to have are these, I guess these hint, these bits that you could probably attach, you could possibly attach weapons to, and you want to actually have them pointing straight ahead. All right, so then we'll take that, and then take the entire bottom section and turn it around, and then we could take the top section up here and close that down. And then bring the bottom section up and peg it in and snap it into place right there. Take these struts, I guess they're supposed to be struts, and fold them back. Take the wheels and fold them up. Take the, I guess these heels, uh, heel spurs, and actually fold them in. And then this, this is kind of silly. I uh, will be first to admit this is kind of a little nuts. What I like to do is just kind of move the wheels out of the way, and then we'll take that whole section, fold it down, and then take the legs and push them up over the rear of the vehicle like that. And then the insides of the feet will peg into the back of the vehicle here. And we just line, reline everything up, get everything in place. Now nothing actually snaps into place, but it all does, except for right here, but it does lay in place quite nicely. Then we'll take the arms and reposition them back to the way they were, like that, and then just fold them up and peg them, peg the back of the, of the upper arms into these black pegs right here. And then the hands don't peg in anywhere, they just kind of lay right at what was the uh, the crotch of the of the figure. Now the other thing you're supposed to do is uh, when you put it in robot mode the bumper, the uh, fenders will be back like that, you just fold them forward, but I find that when I transform it, it ends up being that way anyway. So then the last thing you'll do is fold these sections down, snap them into place, and just make sure these back bits line up. And there we go. So here we have Evac in his future sports car mode. In all honesty, it looks more like a dune buggy that would be on um, on the moon or something than a sports car, but I actually really do like this vehicle mode. I think it looks cool. There's a minimal amount of kibble, and it just looks like it's got rocket thrusters out of the back. There, You, you really can't go wrong with that. Unfortunately, like I said, there is no weapon in this the, to display, which is a shame, but I did find that you can take some mech tech weapons and plug them in right here in the wheel wells. And I will demonstrate that for you with using a uh, Soundwave's cannon. So you could do it, but it looks silly. <laughs> so we'll take that out. I like the uh, the fact that there looks to be a rocket engine coming out of the back of the figure. Uh, I just, I really do dig that. Size-wise, it's small. I mean, it's really small. So uh, here he is next to uh, Hotshot from the R.I.D. line, and it is—it's taller, yes, but it is a little—it is significantly shorter, much smaller wheelbase as well. But I don't mind that. It, based on what the vehicle is supposed to be, it's actually pretty darn cool. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to ride the Transformers ride, but my, as I said, my good friend Optobotomus did. So I think uh, you should hit him up or talk to him if you want to find out how that ride was. Uh, I tend to get a little bit car sick on those things, but eh, whatever. So if you have a chance, or if they do a more general release of this guy, I strongly recommend picking him up. Like I said, I recommend picking this guy up. I think he's a lot of fun, and he looks really, really cool. Now, one thing I think I would love to do is I would love to get a hold of a second one and repaint it. 
Now, for those of you out there who have ever played Saints Row the Third, if you've made it to the end of the game, then you know that there is a, like, kind of a space dune buggy in that game as well. I would love to repaint this guy in the Saints Row the Third color scheme. I think that would be really cool and look really, really good. So that is something I would love to do with this, with this mold. I would also like to see this mold get a general release. I really think uh, getting this just as a movie, or I'm sorry, a uh, theme park ride exclusive figure really is kind of dumb, actually. Uh, I would really, really rather this get a general release because he's a pretty cool figure. And he could be painted and re or repackaged to look very awesome. So, if you could get a hold of this guy for a decent price, I'd go ahead and get it. Given that it's an exclusive, I wouldn't go over 40 bucks. But, you know, the scalpers, they're already charging 60